Okay, I'm going to review this new Soundstream Intec. This one here is a model VIR 931NB. It's the one with the Bluetooth. I'm just going to quickly show you what's in the box. I'm not going to bore you a whole lot with it, but people want to see this stuff, right? This is the main receiver. Up there is just a couple pieces of media which I'm going to use. I got a CD with an MP3 encoded disc. I have a little SD card. I got a DVD which I'm going to use for playback to show you how the screen works. This is the protective case that comes with it. That's my Barbie DVD. Don't laugh at me. It's my review. If you don't like Barbie, turn it off. Uh, that there's my i4 phone. I'm going to use this for the uh, demonstration. This here is the preamp RCA harness, which comes with it. Uh, real quick, front rear sub out, camera input, microphone input. The supplied microphone is right there. The Bluetooth. Also, they got the set of earbuds. Well, actually, I'm sorry. I think the earbuds come with the... Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. The earbuds come with this unit. Because I also have um, a separate optional kit there. It's the uh, backup battery and the kickstand combo, which is right here. This is designed to be connected onto the back of the tablet when you remove it from the vehicle. So you could kind of use it like a little nook kind of deal. The earbuds, the mic, the preamp harness also has a steering wheel interface plug for it as well. Over here, nothing too crazy. A couple screws and nuts and that. Back strap, a couple of trim rings so you can do a couple different ways of mounting it into your vehicle. Uh, real quick, I'll touch on this. This is the optional KS1. It's just the desktop kick. I call it the kickstand. And it also has a, uh, a battery pack built into it. Comes with an AC charger and a DC charger. So let me go back to my little comfort zone, sit down, and I'll start this review for you folks right now. Oh, also, remote control. Almost forgot. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the face panel removed. Here I have the screen. What this is, it's a 9.3 inch panel up on the top it's four buttons for your power volume mute and the eject or tilt button the release button to take the panel off up here as well there's an SD card reader left side nothing bottom nothing on the right side we have a 3.5 millimeter and the USB so you could use that for either an iPod sync type of cable or you could use a supplied cable which looks like this it's actually a half of a pigtail which these are the two sides that's going to go into the receiver these two which I'm using with my own 3.5 millimeter on my sync cable to connect it to my iPhone and I will be using an iPhone 4 I got a new phone now I can talk to my phone which is what I always wanted Siri do this Siri do that so Power up. Let me just come in a little bit. Okay, good. All right, so it starts out on the Bluetooth screen. Well, probably because I left it there. When you first get it, you won't have that. Now, up here, you're going to notice on the top, which I hit the home button. As to be expected, there's all your sources, and you can actually customize these icons. I'll show you that in a second, because I was, of course, goofing around with this unit long before I started this video. And you could take these icons. If you don't want them here, you can move them up to the top like that, and you can customize the bottom so that way if you don't want to have a whole bunch of stuff that you just don't need or don't use for instance this model is a VR 931 NB so it's non Bluetooth all right call me cheap I don't know doesn't have Bluetooth but they have the BT model which you can get with the built-in Bluetooth of course this one I'd have to get it optionally the dimmer you know you might want that if you don't you know, do what you want Bluetooth USB for the side, of course. Setting screen. 
Say if you don't use that a whole lot, don't have a lot of need for it. Drag it, bring it on up there. Settings, USB, we've already seen. Your AM, FM radio, your GPS. I don't have a GPS connected, but you can get the separate navigation for the system, of course. Um, another very cool thing about this is uh, anybody who's watching this video and who lives overseas, this thing will play PAL and NTSC. So you can use this for either region, which is pretty cool. Soundstream did a, a very smart thing because a lot of people buy stuff overseas because it's apparently super expensive. Over here, things are much cheaper, so they like to buy our stuff. Um, a lot of times people buy stuff from, from my, my site uh, only to find that they can't use it. The frequency steps aren't the same or they can't use the tuner or whatever. They get all uptight. This unit is not going to be the case. This one will actually work either scenario. Now, for this Bluetooth, since it wants to show me this Bluetooth screen so much, you can see these buttons are laid out very well. When you touch them, the screen is, I'd say, very responsive. You know, I'll, I'll do it real quick just to try to mess with it. Very good. It's not the same feeling you would get like on an iPad or a Motorola Zoom or something like that. Um, it does have a little bit of a padding or like a cushiony type of a deal. I don't really know how to explain it. But it is responsive. It does work. It does what it's supposed to do. Um, so I have no problem. No complaints there. You can upload all your phone books. Uh, phone books. Pairing. Um, I can't really demonstrate because I don't have the Bluetooth model. Um, but all the icons are laid out very nice. Anybody can really understand what's going on here. Uh, T and C, I guess that's just going to have to be a, a mystery because I don't have a phone to connect them. Sorry. Not that that's a big deal. We're going to cover most of the stuff that's going to apply to this or the Bluetooth model. All right, so. Um, Let's just start by looking at some of the settings. Again with the Bluetooth. Maybe it just wants me to get the Bluetooth adapter. It's trying to tell me something. Now on your main settings screen, your sound. This of course is your fader and balance. Laid out, nice. Easy to follow. Buzzer, you know, so when you hit the button it goes deep, deep, you know, that kind of thing. Subwoofer. I do have a test speaker connected so that way you actually get to hear it as well as see it. I didn't do this in some of my prior videos and I'm trying to do better. Trying. Anyway, this is going to relate to the frequency low pass uh, crossover filter on this receiver. I don't know what the heck is this thing's going to this Bluetooth for so much. Maybe I should just get rid of it. Maybe it'll go away. Let's try that. Goodbye. Okay, maybe we can get on with the review now. Okay, so settings on your sound. The buzzer we have on. Volume for the buzzer. Not bad, right? Subwoofer filter. So if you wanted 80, 80 hertz and lower to pass through. 120, 160, and off. So the lowest you're going to go is 80. Um, I would like to see it be a little bit lower, you know. If it went to around 50 or so, I think that would be a nice touch, but I, but again with this Bluetooth. Um, I personally like to tune my, my boxes a little bit lower, but I guess if you have a, an amplifier for a sub, of course you're going to have a low pass filter on there, so you could set it as high as you want at 160 because your amp's going to get the last word in the, in the case anyway. But at least now you know. So your setting for your sound we went over, your EQ. Bass and treble, nothing really too exciting going on there. Get the extra bass, the loudness feature for lower volumes will give you a higher bass response. You got presets for rock, classic, pop, user. You know, you only have two settings to create for a user, so that's, you know, eh. Not too crazy about that. Your clock, actually, when you hit this, it looks nice. I like that. It looks like a tag hewer watch. You got 12 hour and you got 24 hour mode. You military types. Talk about easy to program the clock. I mean, any, any doofus could do this. Your hour. 
That's monkey business. So that's a credit to this unit. I like that. Oddly enough, that's one of the hardest features to, to set on a, on a radio. Now the USB. The USB, um, I am going to use my, my iPod, so I'm not going to waste my time throwing in a flash drive. Um, let me see if I can turn this off. I'm learning this for the first time as I go, so bear with me. I don't know why that Bluetooth is doing that to me so much. I don't know. But USB, we're not going to touch on that. As for your radio, nice, bright. What's not to like? Your presets are laid out very nice. Like, you got the little notebook tabs going on there. Now let's see what we got here for bands. We have FM2, FM3, AM1. AM2. Okay, so you got 12 presets for AM. You got 18 for FM. Pretty typical. What radio doesn't have that? This is no exception. There you go. There's your radio. This is your quick tab to mute and do your volume. Actually, I'm kind of wishing now that I turn that buzzer off or turns it lower because it's kind of annoying me. So let's fix that. Go back. Where was it? Sound? No. No. Clocks. It must have been system. Oh, I forgot where it was. Dope. All right, so your radio, laid out very nice, good contrast, laid out very well, all your presets, these tabs, again, very responsive, good credit to this, because that, that's really what determines a really cheap touchscreen from a good touchscreen. Like I mentioned previously, this unit will accept an SD card, which is not just useful just for when it's in your dash in your vehicle, but also when you detach it, and if you use it just walking around with it. You can use the earbuds, listen to your music files. You could put, you know, all kinds of files onto that SD right there. Utilize that, which is nice. This is a blank card, but it's going to show you all the files which you could toggle very much just like an iPod. You could break down subfiles again, however you you correlate your information onto the media like the SD card, that's going to determine how it's going to lay out. But that's very nice. I think that that's great. I'm going to give this iPod cable another shot right now. Now this touchscreen is, I'm not going to say it's anywhere near par or something like an Apple iPad 2 or something equivalent, not even close. But it's definitely not like one of those ching chang, ting tang, you know, no name Chinese junk things. I've even owned one. It was so bad I let my son grab it and play Angry Birds. He got so angry with it, threw it on the floor and smashed it into four pieces. This is not going to be that kind of a deal. Um, I can assure you when you have one of these, if you do purchase one of these, you're not going to spend a lot of time yelling at it and cursing at it. it. It works. It's smooth. So in that respect, it's good. That's what we want. We don't want no cheap junk. The Navi, we do not have it connected. We don't have the optional GPS, but if I ever do, I'll be happy to do a follow-up review and show you how it does work. I've had experience working with um, Soundstream add-on Navi boxes. They are pretty good. I like them. Now, as far as the iPod... Let's go ahead and plug that in. Now, as for the iPod, let me spend a minute with you guys on this iPod. Like I said, I'm using an iPhone 4. Now, of course, on the bottom of all iPods, you have the long data cable, right? And then on the top, you're going to have the 3.5 millimeter. You're going to need to utilize both of those. So, as a discredit to this unit, you have to have these two wires hanging off your iPod, like so. And the way it's going to work on the receiver is you're going to have to plug in your USB right there on the top and plug in that audio. Because this is what happened to me when I first started goofing around with this prior to starting this video and making it. What I've, what I've done is I um, plugged in my iPod, I looked at the screen, and I said, okay, yeah, that's right, but how come I can't hear it? Because I'm so unaccustomed to having to utilize both of these. Now watch what happens when I plug this in. Um, is it playing? 
so I'm pull this play. Sure, all my connections are tight. Okay. Okay, it said authenticating. It's on stop. Now it's playing. That's interesting. Why I'm not hearing it? It was working very well before, so I'm, I can only presume that it's something that I'm doing. See the radio is playing just fine. Let me just double check. It bothers me when I do these videos and the things start acting wacky. It bothers me, man. Let's try this. I don't know. I'm not doing too good with this part of the video. This part of the video. Well, it does. It does play. Maybe I should do something with this. I don't understand. I'll grab another one of my Apple products, but whatever. For the sake of the video, let's just keep it moving. Now you got your your fast forward. You have your rewind right there. That's gonna do your mix. If you, if you just want to repeat them all, play pause. Now on your menu, very nice. You get your playlists, your artists, your albums, genres, all music. This is not like a slidey kind of a deal. It's more like a touchy kind of a deal. So if you were expecting to have like that authentic tablet type of experience as far as the iPod control is going to go, um, you're going to be a little disappointed there. But still, I mean, it works rather nice. Alice in Chains... Playing song two or three, repeat, all is on, that's fine. Lots of text. That's a good credit to this unit because even units that cost twice as much as this one right here do not offer that. And you're gonna actually see something to its credit again when you when you watch the MP3 encoded disc, and I'll show you that right now. So what I'll do is I'm gonna unplug my iPod on both sides. I'm gonna come back to it and hopefully when I do it works right. I can only imagine that it's something I'm doing because I know it was working awesome prior to starting this up. So I'm going to show you where you put the disc in and how that works. Right up on the top is a button, folds right out. There's your disc. Now that's my DVD, so I'll just go over this really quick and I'll show you the resolution of the screen. The resolution of the screen is very nice. I'll give it some credit for that. I'd have to say it's very comparable to, you know, a lot of um, tablets that I own in my own home. It's very good, very sharp. Beautiful, vivid, clean, good contrast. Sound is good. It is a little lagging. I would like to see a little bit more of, of equalization, customization. But, you know, you can't have it all. Give it a touch. It's going to give you the, um, the small window. It's going to go back to your controls so you can adjust all your stuff. So your, your settings, for your contrast, tint, color, brightness. I'm going to turn everything down flat so you can get a true idea of what this looks like. without trying to make it look any better. And this is an HD camera, so you should get a good idea of what you can expect to see when you own one of these. And again, this is a cartoon. I mean, usually these things do look rather good. So that's enough of the DVD. Let me show you that MP3 that I have on a disc real quick. Stand by.
Now here's a close-up of what the MP3 screen looks like. It's just a standard CD encoded with an MP3. I'm going to zoom in to show you better detail. It's nice. You can see that it's overlaying the information up on the top here. Nice feature. Let me show you some other highlights of this unit. So yeah, I knew it was me. My iPod, is, I re-plugged it in. It's working like a champ. So again, it's showing you playing two or three songs from this artist. My repeat is on. Album, artist, song, lots of information. The scrolling bar, very nice. Not the touchable kind where you can grab it and drag it around like you can on a video when you're watching on a computer or anything. But still, very nice. Over here is where you can tog toggle right now. I'm in artists. Very quick, very responsive. Nice. I'll try this remote now. Very nice. Now again, if you had your GPS system connected into this unit, you could have GPS going on in the background, you could have your MP3, and if you had the Bluetooth version either with this model, with the optional Bluetooth adapter, if you had the BT model installed in your vehicle, you would have the ability to do all three simultaneously, which is a good attribute to the unit as well. So. So far, this unit's doing pretty good. Again, for the for the money and all the stuff that you're getting for your money, it, it's it's looking pretty good to me. I could definitely say that any guy who is just wants to buy it just for the coolness factor or just for a show off factor, in itself is worth it. I mean, it's it's a it's a real start. It's something really different, you know, to see. I mean, when I first looked at it, I was like, well, what the heck is this? Don't get excited. It's not a Wi-Fi tablet or anything like that. It is still a car stereo. But God knows what they'll create in the future, what kind of updates or preceding models that they'll they'll have. But real quick, I'll go over everything, then I'll flip it around, show you what's going on in the back of this unit, and we'll wrap this video up. So this is an LCD touchscreen. It accepts KS1, which is the de the desktop media player, which is the piece that I was showing you before, which has a kickstand. Uh, the resolution is 800 by 480. Um, it has a motorized angle adjustment. Up on here, the same button you use to eject it, you can hold it and you can get several positions. Um, obviously the panel comes off like I showed you before. Uh, she will play a DVD R, RW, CDR, RW, MP3s, MP4s, DivX, and AVI. Now they like to sell their IC3 iPod cable for this unit. I would not suggest it. Uh, for me, you know, I'd say why bother? Um, you already have a 3.5 millimeter cable and uh, a SYN cable anyway, so why bother? Why waste your money? Um, you can get the digital TV tuner, which is model DTV3. Um, you can get the peripheral or the pack or the access, whichever one, the ASWC steering wheel interface. It plugs right into it. You got four channels of 2 volt preamp RCA outputs for your front and rear audio outputs, and you also have a variable like I was explaining with the low pass filter or crossover for the subwoofer output channel. You got an AV output for other components plus a camera. Um, it boasts a 52 by 4 MOSFET power amplifier for the outputs which of course is BS. Um, you could probably take half of that for all the heat dissipation and everything else this thing is doing. But then again, it's not an amplifier. It's just a radio. It's a source unit. If they thought that this unit was going to be the solve all for everything, they wouldn't have RCA outputs, right? Um, you got 18 FM at 12 AM presets, like I mentioned. Um, the region capability, which that's a very big seller, probably the biggest thing on this unit for me. Um, the EQ settings, for me a little disappointing. Um, the clock feature is nice, it's a good backdrop at least. Um, the NTS PAL audio auto selection, very nice. Um, I mean, it works with most Bluetooth-enabled phones. It's got noise and echo cancellation. You can easily transfer your contact list to it. Caller ID shows a name and number from your contacts list. And recent call and time talk logs are, are built right into the unit as well. 
So you got that, and also it'll do Bluetooth streaming, streaming from your telephone to the receiver right out of the box. So let's flip this guy around, let's take a look at the back, and that'll be the end of this review. Okay, so there's the back of your receiver. Once again, this is your tablet. Nice and thin. Doesn't weigh much either. I'd say like maybe like, I don't know, maybe like a pound and a half. Easily bearable. And they give you that little case too. So that's nice. And in the back, nothing too crazy going on. Antenna. You got your 16 pin plug. Power ground. Accessory. Um, four sets of speaker outputs. You got your parking brake input. And on this one you don't have to stress the fact of trying to get the ground when running. You can uh, basically just ground that, that brake wire. Watch video because we all know that's what you're going to do with it anyway. You have your illumination wire over here. You have your two volt preamps like I was explaining before. Plus you got a video output so you can have a slave monitor and can feed the video from this front monitor to rear videos or flip down screens, whatever. Steering wheel control plug right there. Camera over here. That's your Bluetooth mic. That's your earbuds which come with it so you can plug that right into the, the uh, unit on the side. There, and that's it, man. That's the new Soundstream VR nine thirty one NB. Also covers these models: seven thirty eight NB, seven thirty eight NBT, nine thirty one NB, which is the one we're using right here, and the nine thirty one NBT. There you have it.